Good morning, folks. We have a lot to hit today, especially in the Earth events category. In fact, today's news is all about the Earth, except for a touch of cosmology at the end, and us starting with our star here at spaceweathernews.com. Last 24 hours on the sun were quiet. Bright central area is the tiny sunspot group. Tried to get some popping action going, but the region is too small, and localized field snaps are all we got. Plasma filaments watching the show from the sidelines gave up on any flaring. Both standing ovations are dissipating this morning. Solar wind is dying down this morning as we're between coronal hole streams and the geomagnetic conditions are beginning to bottom out too. These next coronal holes will deliver intensified solar wind towards the end of the weekend but will magnetically connect within 48 hours and an earthquake watch begins. Tornadoes reported in the east yesterday morning. Plenty of damage from the Atlantic Beach Twister there. And from tornadoes in the east, we move to cold in the central and south central states. Record cold. Record snow. It just won't stop. And it also has begun in Russia for the season, where to make news as a blizzard in Siberia requires a significant winter event. The most beautifully electric moment on Earth last day was at the top of the Sakurajima volcano. An explosive eruption at the top of the mountain let loose lightning and arc discharges amidst the fire, ash, and smoke. Now, speaking of volcanoes... If you heard about the global seismic waves rippling around the globe earlier this week, a Southampton researcher has confirmed it came from something like a magma dome collapse beneath the volcanic islands on the northern reach between Madagascar and Africa. This is the region that has been hit by seismic activity this year, much more so than in most of the last decade at least, and it is difficult not to recall the Suswa Rift, that enormous crack opening in Africa where the ground is tearing apart. Just what is happening beneath the surface here in this part of the world? Earth Observatory visualizing the ozone situation over Antarctica. After the massive growth of the hole over a few decades, there was a plateau, and now we see the slightest drop back in the deep red. Your ironic story of the day? Dams disrupt water cycles and create greater consumption of the water locally. That greater consumption leads to expansion during the next drought, further disruption, and even greater local consumption. Dams actually create a downward spiral towards collapse. Interesting piece here on how climate variations doomed the people of the ancient Indus region, modern-day Pakistan. Drought drove the plain civilization to great stress and up into the mountains. Krill, joining phytoplankton in the not-bothered-by-climate-change category. This makes two of the greatest food source foundations of Earth that appear to either adapt well to the changes or actually begin to mitigate the changes, as was the case where phytoplankton were shown to grow larger and consume more CO2. Speaking of not bothered by climate change, Coral Islands, major flip of the script there on the coral front. Folks, this is the universe simulation from Illustris. It uses the standard dark matter model and I'm showing it to counter the sentiments of our last few evening videos. If you care about the cosmology, electric universe, dark matter story, etc., the videos listed right below this one put incredible efforts like this into significant question. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.